Yes, the mythical, the mythical uh, Alma build system. All right, here we go. Hello there. As we like to usually start, um, we are Alma Linux. Um, I'm Jack. Obviously, um, I guess I'll let everyone introduce themselves. Uh, so, guys, why don't you go ahead? I think this is the first time a few of you are uh, presenting here. So. Okay, I will go first. Uh, my name is Vasily, and I'm a team lead for uh, engineering team behind the Alma Linux build system. Uh, so, yeah, basically uh, distributing tasks uh, for people and making sure we are doing uh, the right thing. Thanks. Uh, my name is Andrew, and I'm uh, Alma Linux architect, and I'm responsible for all the packaging stuff, all the ISO stuff, uh, my team also do, do cloud images, uh, Docker images, so on, and so on. So uh, I am the main user of uh, Alma Linux build system now. My name, <clears throat> uh, my name is Vyacheslav, and I am a Python developer. Uh, I am a main developer of Alma Linux build system. All right, and uh, thanks everyone for joining us. So, uh, of course, we want to start out by thanking um, all the foundation members and sponsors. Um, all the support really helps us do everything that we've been able to do from day one. So uh, thank you, everyone. Um, if you know them, if you don't know them, get to know them. Thank you so much. So um, what is the Alma Linux build system? So obviously it's a system to automate the process of building, testing, signing and releasing packages and the Alma Linux distribution itself. Um, it's really geared for automation and minimizing human error in that whole um, process. Um, the foundation of the build system started with the Cloud Linux um, building automation system, which was a project that was started in 2012 Obviously, um, this is a lot more intricate than that, but some of the concepts that were used there um, kind of carried over into this. And then, of course, um, we integrate with Jenkins to extend a lot of the functionality in the system. So many of you may be asking, why not Koji? Well, obviously, because we have loads of free time on our hands and figured there would no, be no better way to spend that time than putting together our own build system. So... Um, there was that. And then uh, we also wanted to facilitate learning. Um, the process of putting together a distribution is a complex one. And we felt like, you know, doing this uh, would help a lot of people um, learn about about learn a lot about that process. And hopefully will allow the community to learn a lot about this process, too, as different parts of the build system are opened up um, and made available to them. Um, we also wanted to support additional package formats, so not just RPMs. Um, we also wanted to provide a single integrated pipeline for distribution maintenance. So the building, the testing, the sign, the release, um, just to have that all under one umbrella um, in one pipeline. And um, really just something to manage that whole chain from end to end. How does it work? So... Um, I guess uh, Vasily or Slava, you guys want to talk a little bit about this one? Yeah, I can take it from here. Sure. Uh, okay, so um, uh, basically it uh, all starts with uh, upstream uh, Git repository, which we uh, which we then pull into our Git repos with a little uh, little magic on it. Um, um, after that, we start to actually produce packages out of uh, out of our uh, out of our gits. So uh, it's this schema looks a bit scary actually and big, but it's uh, come down to pretty simple things like uh, master services actually just a simple maybe even small web server uh, backend. Uh, which just uh, handles all of the uh, user requests, UI and stuff, and so on. 
uh, build nodes uh, handles all of the things like uh, uh, all of the mock stuff and uh, and so all of the actually actually producing packages out of uh, so source uh, source repos. So after uh, after we got our RPM packages. Uh, uh, our build nodes applied in them to our artifact storage. Uh, we are using uh, previously on previous iteration of this of, of uh, this project. We was using just raw file system and some of our own stuff. But uh, this Alma Linux build system is at the move to pulp since it's kind of it's kind of mature and uh, you know. Uh, is handling uh, our needs uh, uh, more. Basically, it's a good uh, artifact storage, and it allows us uh, uh, to expand further to uh, if we will want to go to dev uh, packages to even building containers and so on. Uh, Pulp uh, has us covered because it has uh, different plugins uh, inside. And yeah, it fits our needs pretty good. Yeah, it's also allow us to remove a lot, uh, a lot of boilerplate, a lot of bugs, uh, a lot of stuff. I mean, I can't even uh, remember what we I hit a single issue with Pulp. So uh, Pulp really helps us to, to build things uh, faster. Uh, after uh, after package is producing, it comes down to uh, to the test system, uh, which is uh, kind of sophisticated stuff going on here. It's decide to uh, to test it on, uh, on 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 real machine if it's uh, some uh, some some sort of special package which require uh, like real kernel and stuff, or uh, or we can use Docker for, for test. After that, all of the test logs and results comes comes to, to our main service and our pulp. We are not using pulp only for like RPM packages and stuff. We are, we are also using it for logs. So it's kind of great. We can, we can reuse uh, this thing for everything. Uh, if everything is fine and package is uh, built and tested and everything is fine, so we move it to the, we actually sign it, so so everyone could understand that this is package produced by us. Uh, is this little thing called sign server? Uh, signed packages also comes down comes down to pulp so it's, it's yeah and after that we have um, uh, after that we uh, just actually sync in our pulp repositories to our, to our mirrors and stuff so so yeah uh, to to our clients uh, I think that's probably it. Yeah, so I'm going to walk through um, a little bit more of the details of some of those uh, pieces. So um, we use Gitty for um, the sources, um, and that's at git.almalinux.org. We also put together a, lis a listener which watches for the updates on the CentOS Git repository. And then whenever there is an update, it basically queues the data um, via MQTT and then the master service, um, which is really kind of like the brain behind what's going on, um, subscribes to the queue. And then um, when it sees that another message has come in, it figures out what to do with, with that message, basically, which could be one of a couple of different things. So um, this is the master service. Basically, um, without getting into too much detail, um, it interacts with everything via API. Um, and that makes it very extensible, which is great. Um, it can create a build depending on the message. It can restart a build, delete a build. Um, and it takes the mess, the, the task <clears throat> basically based on the message from the, from the queue and then sends it out to the build nodes. 
and tells the tells the build node to build. Once the build node builds, it'll send it another message back, and then um, it comes. It'll send it to the test to the test system, and then after the test system passes everything, it'll send it another message back, and then the package will get moved on to the signing nodes, and then it'll get released into the repo. So. Um, this really allows maintaining platforms for builds like you can add a new platform with new architectures also um it's all very kind of streamlined we also have uh multi-lib support via beholder um, we have no arch support so that if you're building a no arch package it's not going to get rebuilt for all the arches that you build um and you can take a look at the um api docs to see like the full um set of functionality um for the master service uh on github so what's the tech stack behind the master service? Um, we're using Postgres for the database. We're using Pulp for the artifact storage, like was mentioned a few times already. Um, we use Redis uh, as a storage source for, for our repo info and front end info cache. Um, we use Nginx for the web front end. Um, Docker's part of that, um, Python 3.9, uh, uh, Fast API, which is a REST API framework. Um, SQL Alchemy and Alembic. So the build nodes, um, like was mentioned, um, and again, all of, I keep putting, I put a lot of the links in here because I want to make sure that people have the ability to go in and see all the code. Um, so the, the build nodes basically receive a build task from the, um, via the queue from the master, and then, um, it'll commit the package back to artifact storage. Um, once the build is done, hopefully the build goes through properly. Um, it supports multi-arch as well. You can build from a specific tag or a specific branch too. And um, it built, the, so the build tasks, the artifacts, the packages, the logs, basically everything gets stored in pulp. Like pulp is, if the master service is like the brain, pulp is the heart or the stomach of all this stuff. Um, and it can handle multiple builds simultaneously that's configurable based on, you know, what the underlying resources of your system are. Um, then we have the test system. So the test system is actually very robust. Um, like Slava said, like it can do a bunch of things. So um, it, it's, it's built to be like a, a real system for real circumstances. Um, it can launch a bunch of tests. Um, there's, you can you can specify like the test runner type, the distro name, all the stuff that I have on the slide here. Um, it basically calculates like where to send the task. And then we have um, Celery, which is like the task manager, listens to the queue. Um, we also use Terraform to manage the test environment. So like we mentioned, if it's like, if it needs a real machine, it'll get a real machine to test on. If it needs a container, it'll be tested with a container. If it needs a VM, it'll get tested in a VM. Um, and then all the artifacts and also the task results are stored back in pulp. So we have all that um, documented and you know all of it is transparent. And anyone that's doing any of the work can obviously take a look at any of that stuff and see what happened. Um, and then it'll return the status and results via a separate endpoint. And then things move on to the signing server. So the signing server is really kind of basic. Um, it sends like a request for work to the master service and it'll get back a signing task like saying, hey, here's a package for you to sign. It downloads the, the package from the artifact storage and then it'll check um, the, the PGP key for uh, validity each time it signs the package. So the Alma keys, um, every, it verifies them every time. And then it'll sign the file and then it'll upload the signed file back into pulp and it updates the status obviously in the queue so um that's like the thirty thousand foot um overview and then i think uh vasily is going to do like a little demo of how the system actually works and um what you can do with it so uh vasily I'll, i will stop sharing and i'll let you share okay so let me share uh, our build system <laughs> UI. So as you can see, now uh, we have a read-only uh, view for everyone to come and check what we have, what we've built and so on. Uh, you can go into each build, 
see the artifacts, uh, see the status for signing, whether it's secure be, uh, boot built or not. Um, by the way, we have uh, support for signing uh, via secure boot uh, certificates. Uh, so as you can see, we have a list of artifacts for each uh, architecture uh, we've built. Uh, we also show from which uh, reference it was built. And we have a list of repositories related to each uh, architecture plus uh, source. Uh, and you, sorry, one sec. I will probably just share the whole, yeah. As you can see, Pulp provides a uh, way to see uh, the actual repositories in pretty straightforward way. Uh, so yeah, uh, you have uh, all the logs, you have uh, ability to check what was uh, going on, uh, what were, uh, was the config for building this package, what were the logs, and uh, what are the test logs. And Fortunately, they are still running, so nothing uh, there right now. You can also download the log, and uh, you can also download the package itself. Uh, for example, let's do this, and the package will be downloaded. You can uh, check the contents on your machine. So to build something you need to log in for now we have only a github login but uh, in the future we will uh, support uh, different uh, social uh, logins uh, as you can see the interface now has uh, additional buttons uh, like uh, you can check uh, what were, uh, were released uh, you can create a new release you can create an it's called a new distribution, but basically it's a set of repositories where you can uh, put a few uh, builds uh, and reuse them as a single entity. And uh, for the builds, uh, we have an ability to uh, build both uh, packages and modulars. So the system comes with the modularity support. Uh, you can select uh, platform and then you can select what architectures you will be building for. In my case, I will select two, for example. We have additional flavors like uh, uh, we can enable uh, YAPL repositories for our build. Or we have also uh, the beta flavor for Alma Linux 8. We have ability to set uh, different mock options uh, for the build. Uh, and uh, set whether it will be a secure boot uh, build. Then you come to uh, project selections. Uh, what is project selection is basically uh, our all the packages we have in uh, Gitia uh, source manager. Uh, so for example, I will try to build something, something like crop. I pick the package and then I have all the references uh, for it. I will be building from the branch, uh, for example, this one. Uh, and then I submit, I have uh, the item put to the scheduler. Uh, I also can uh, change the mock options for the project. And then I just create a build. Uh, it will not uh, <laughs> be instantly on the screen because uh, creating a build uh, is a bit intricate process because we need to create different uh, repositories and so on. It takes a lot of time and uh, uh, just to ensure uh, that uh, everything will be working fine, we've decided to have uh, background tasks for long operations uh they uh, uh they're working uh, using traumatic uh instrumentary so if you will refresh the page you see that build is started and for modularities uh for modularity for example let's pick uh, the same uh alma linux 8 and uh one architecture it's the same interface but you have this toggle which 
uh, now we have modulus and if uh, we are picking up something it's uh, modulus not uh, packages so for example let's pick uh, nginx uh, the same selection for uh, references and now i will try to build something like that and as you can see uh, we have already uh, nginx built uh, for our distribution but uh, we can override this so uh, we can just press uh, plus button and this will mean that we want to build package uh, build module uh, even if it's already built uh, we have a preview for uh, modulus yaml file uh, in our interface and we also can set uh, different mock options for the module and well, when we're done with all the settings we just create a build and uh, wait until it uh, will pop up uh, in the interface so that's basically it uh, pretty straightforward, yeah, easy to use, and uh, provides quite a bit of uh, flexibility in terms of what uh, you will be able to build. Uh, also, uh, I've showed only uh, when we use uh, Gitia, but you can basically build from well, either from uh, a SRPM URL you provide here, or you can build basically from any public repository uh, on the internet. You just put uh, its URL and the reference from which you will be building it, and it will also be picked up by the system. So that's pretty much it. Awesome, so um, let me share again. And then we'll just talk a little bit about uh, the roadmap. So what is our roadmap? Um, so for um, July timeframe, uh, we'd like to finish implementing the role-based access control and grant access to maintainers and contributors from different orgs. Um, we think that's very important uh, for the community to have that uh, capability and to be able to use the system as well. So we don't want it to be something that's used exclusively by us. Um, also, one thing that we're trying to do is integrate um, software bill of material support um, via code notary. So basically have um, uh, attestation and, um, you know, provenance for everything that runs through the build system, um, which will eventually become a federal requirement and, and maybe even beyond the United States. But um, certainly, it's becoming like a best practice for security. So we want to make sure that we have that as well. And then um, for the future, we want to um, set up uh, organizations and SIG namespaces. Uh, we also want to provide support for copper repos. And one of the most important things, I think, is also to automate uh, VM and, and container image uh, builds because um, it would make Bala, who's saying hi in the chat right now, uh, it would make his life much easier because um, right now a lot of that um, needs to be triggered manually and um, just automating that would make things a lot easier uh, for everyone and, and just reduce the release time. So um, what you can do to help um, join us, of course, um, I can't say enough about that. Um, no matter what you do, we can use your help, obviously, um, DevOps for sure. Cloud stuff, HPC, security. Um, if anyone wants to write docs, I will love you forever. Um, you know our site, our wiki. Um, we have our community chat, uh, which is bridge to IRC, which is the most happening place on earth. Um, all our sources for everything um, is on GitHub and git.almalinux.org. Um, also, check out Elevate. Um, we're actually looking into doing eight to nine right now, so we could use help with that. And um, probably the most important thing is become a member of the foundation if you care about the project. Um, it's totally free um, for anyone to become a member. And we've actually just been discussing like time frame for elections for the fall. So um, I'd you know, like to give everyone a chance and make sure that everyone has a chance to make sure their voice is heard. So um, I think that's it for us for now. 
Um, these are some resources that you can use if you need to reach us or want to get involved. And uh, thanks, everybody. And Sean, I believe that's your cue. If anyone has any Q&A, we can uh, continue in here. I believe Sean may want us to take it into the uh, hallway track. Now you can. Thanks. Yeah, so like the uh, there's a participant limit in Hopin, um, and it's by default set to five. And apparently, the presentation counts as a separate participant. So uh, anyway, are there any uh, any questions? I don't see anything in the Q and A, and I think you guys addressed everything that came up in the chat. If not, I think we're uh, we're right at time anyway. So. Uh, our next talk will be in, in 15 minutes at uh, half past the hour. So uh, thanks all four of you for this great presentation and I'll, uh, I'll see you all in the hallway track. Thanks everyone. Thanks. Bye. Bye.